All right. Good morning. You know, get everybody to pay attention here with the pounding of the gavel. We're here. It's in the Marion County Board of Commissioners meeting today, Wednesday, January 13th, 2016, uh, Courthouse Square. Welcome. We're going to start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, it's a good morning. We're out of the rain here, and um, our first order of business is public comment. And uh, we have a guest with us today. We're going to appoint under the consent calendar. Um, Ruth, would you like to come up and, and uh, introduce yourself? And I guess Tamara's going to come with you as well. Good morning, Commissioners. Tamara Gatch, Director of Community Services, and we oversee the Children and Families Commission. And I'm joined this morning by Ruth Kelbrick. So we're before you today to um, ask for your appointment of Ruth to the Children and Families Commission of for, gosh, probably since uh, Superintendent Perry has come to the Salem-Kaiser uh, School District. She has had an interest in serving on the commission, uh, but as you can probably imagine, her schedule is quite hectic, and when we uh, spoke with her and talked with her about uh, the importance of having the school district uh, at the table, helping us to identify needs of uh, children and families in our area, uh, she readily um, brought to forward Ruth's name and is her recommendation to us for you to consider this morning. But I'm going to turn it over to Ruth and have her talk a little bit about who she is and her interest in the commission and what she does at the school district. Thank you, commissioners. My name is Ruth Galbrick and I'm the director of student services for 24J, 38 years in education, 22 on the executive cabinet. So I've been through a number of superintendents, so I'm a survivor. <laughs> and, uh, my job is to work with 66 beautiful students with disabilities. I oversee the counseling and health services departments for the district and the crisis team. And I have wonderful staff. My interest is furthering students' goals in education. And I was delighted when the superintendent gave me this opening. And I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Great. Well, welcome. And we're glad to have you and the school district represented again. Commissioner? Well, I don't have any questions right off. I'm just looking over the list of interests and uh, children birth age to 21 with disabilities and all principalships and a lot of education, a lot of, uh, a lot of helping people. So certainly a welcome addition to our Children and Families Commission. Is there anything you particularly maybe want to accomplish? Maybe I haven't thought about that yet, but what do you, uh, what do you see that uh, you'll be aiming at? I just would like to have the school district um, work very closely with everyone. I think that representation from the district would be helpful. We serve all the children, we were, and I work with students 3 to 21, so I have a little broader category. And I just uh, think the perspective, it's helpful to have the school district there. Well, I agree, and I'm thankful you're here and enjoyed meeting you this morning. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming in this morning, and thank we're going to formally approve you in our consent calendar. And uh, it's great to, to you could make a personal appearance. And I know that you, you said you've got to get back to work. And I'm subbing today for some. OK. <laughs> and so we were thankful we could put you at the top of the agenda. And thanks for your service. Really Thank you appreciate very much. it. OK. Appreciate, thanks. Appreciate your consideration. Now, I do Thank note you. she also listed mediation on her. On her. Oh, yeah. Oh, we need her. <laughs> well, it would be good if she'd stay for a little while. But <laughs> it doesn't work out. I can do that. <laughs> thanks, Ruth. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I don't see anybody else signed up for public comment, so we'll go ahead and move in that consent agenda. Chair Cameron, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent cal uh, calendar this morning uh, on it. The first one we just met, uh, approve an order to appoint Ruth Gelbridge to the Marion County Children and Family Commission with a term ending January 31st, 2018. Approve an order that staggers terms on the Children and Families Commission members Jamie Arredondo, Gladys Bloom, Gail Calderazzo Doty, Terry Fronmeyer, Krina Lee, Jason Myers, and Jim Seymour from June 30th, 2018 to January 31st, 2017. It seems backwards, but I'm sure there's a reason. 
Approve an order to appoint Ian Tolleson to the Marion County Economic Development Advisory Board for a term ending June 30th, 2019. Reappoint Chad Freeman, Lisa Goff, and Angie Moore to the Marion County Economic Development Advisory Boards with terms ending June 30th, 2017. And the last, Public Works, schedule a final consideration to adopt administrative ordinance granting zone change comprehensive plan amendment ZCCP 15002 White for January 20, 2016. I'll second your motion, and I believe that um, those dates are, in other words, those people were appointed through 2018, and they're moving them up to 2017 I'm to fine. stagger the, the deal. That's why it's all a right. little confusing. So all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, passes. Under action this morning, first up is community services. Consider approval of an order to allocate Marion County's fiscal year 15-16 Oregon video lottery proceeds in the amount of 50,000 for a board designated allocation. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, my name is Sarah Cavazos. I'm management analyst with community services and staff to the economic development program. The item that we have before you today is um, for consideration is a order to allocate uh, $50,000 to board designated allocation with the Career Technical and Education Center. Uh, this application came before the Board of Commissioners in a work session on June 4th. And um, kind of the background on this is that Marion County has identified through SEDCOR, um, one of our funded agencies has had discussion at EDAB and just among staff about the workforce gap for our traded sector, specifically manufacturing construction, and um, there being high demand for employees and lack of eligible workforce to go into these career fields. And so we're interested in supporting this pilot project that will explore um, having targeted trade education for students in high school and plugging them directly into careers. So the order, um, it, the application was already approved by the Board of Commissioners, but in order to issue the contract, we need to have an order to allocate the funds. So you have any questions? It was a while ago we did this. Yeah, I don't have any questions, and I'm all for it, but just kind of by coincidence, Nick Harville, breakfast at State and yesterday that we do monthly, was commenting how hard it is for people to find employees here in the Mid-Valley. Uh, talked about firms going down to the Bay Area recruiting people to do uh, jobs like that people get trained. And then, of course, the opportunity for youngsters in our area. Um, and in, this has been a private operation, mm -hmm. but uh, I certainly like the opportunity to show some support and help somewhat, because I think it's great for both business and, and uh, training for our youth. So I might as well, while I'm talking, make the motion that we do approve the order that allocates $50,000 of lottery funds for the for this board designated allocation i'll second the motion uh further discussion um just so those so people that are watching understand the uh, career, the cte center which is like you said private there's probably about a six million dollar private um investment in that center and then it's public with the salem kaiser uh school district operations and it's Amazing, I got to take a tour of that CTE uh, a few months back, and the students were so professional. And they've changed the term from working on soft skills to professional skills. And you go through the building, and these you know juniors and seniors in high school are coming up to you and introducing themselves with their hand out, firm handshake, saying, let me show you what I'm working on. They're teaching them math skills that have to do with um, actually construction, reading a ruler or a tape, and, and then um, the English teacher is working on the English things that apply into the construction business. It's great to see these kids kind of take off, and we may have lost some of these students um, had they not had this opportunity. So it's a real good program, private-public partnership, and uh, I know this is a very small amount compared to what they're operating on, but we're, we're proud that we could help out, and I'm sure we'll see results in the future. Um, any other comments, Sarah, before we take a vote? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Approval. Aye. Aye. Okay, the order passes. Thanks, Sarah. 
Uh, next action item is under finance, and I believe we've got um, Jeff is here, I see, and Cynthia. Um, I don't know who the guy is in the back. I don't either. Yeah, he doesn't know himself. Yeah. Um, consider a, approval of the 2014-15 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Welcome, Chuck. Thank you, Peter. Cynthia. Good morning. For the record, I'm Cynthia Granitier, Chief Accountant with the Marion County Finance Department. And we've completed the preparation and audit of the county's financial statements for last fiscal year. And we have them here for your approval. Also, so you should have received a hard copy of that. Mm -hmm. And also included in your packet is a letter from our auditors just summarizing the conclusion of their audit of our financial statements. And also a memo I drafted covering the key points of the new pension accounting standards that were implemented for last fiscal year. So um, we received an unmodified opinion on the financial report. That's the highest level of assurance or audits of financial statements. There were no exceptions noted in the report that's required by Oregon minimum standards. Did you have any questions either about the letter from Grove Mueller and Swank or the memo that I drafted about the new pension accounting standards? Um, I guess what I maybe Chuck, sir, if you want to introduce yourself, is there anything that you saw that we needed to, to uh, be aware of? I, I read the the uh, memo, but I didn't. I have not read the full report. It's sitting on my desk. I think I got it last week. Um, it's um, good. I'm, it's good I'm material. Chuck Swank with Grove Mueller and Swank. And to answer your question directly, Commissioner, I do have some things I want to say, uh, but they're in the context of congratulating your county finance function. Jeff, Cynthia, and the crew, they do an outstanding job. It is an absolute pleasure for our firm to work with them. Now, that being said, this person on my left really took a commanding lead in this pension pronouncement implementation, not just what she did here at the county, but she was a tremendous assistance to the Oregon Society of CPAs. This hit the whole state. Um, there was good cooperation with PERS. Um, I'm not sure anybody understands the footnote when we're done, but she worked really hard to make it as understandable as possible. So I, want, I really want to say thank you, both from our firm, but also from the entire group of accountants in the state. So the, the foot, well, in your memo, Cynthia, it says the implementation of the new pension standards, county's net position of July 1st, 2014 was reduced from 260 million approximately to 187 million. Is that what we're talking about, this accounting change and the pension? That's part of it. Because it's a change in accounting principle, we had to restate our beginning net position. And that's based on the pension measurements as of June 30, 2013. There's some lag time between the measurement date for the pension-related items and our fiscal year end. And that's mostly because of all the time that's required for the actuaries to uh, make the measurements and prepare the information that goes into our financial statements. So for our July 1, 2014, balances. It's a measurement date of June 30, 2013. And at that, the circumstances as of that date were such that PERS had a fairly large net pension liability, meaning that its liabilities exceeded its assets, at actuarially determined basis. And so um, Mary County reports its proportionate share of that which is about 0.8% of the PERS total. And so that impacted our beginning net position because we had to recognize all of the, the related net pension liability. So for the end of the fiscal year, 
Uh, we used a measurement date of June 30, 2014. So our financial year end is June 30, 2015, but the measurement date for the pension related items was basically a year earlier. And the facts and circumstances at that time resulted in a net pension asset for the system. So there's that, so that's why we uh, ended up having a net pension asset at the end of the fiscal year, and we had a negative pension expense for the year. And this would be true for all Oregon governments reporting their proportionate share of PERS. Uh, so, <laughs> to I'm complicate, to see if you really understand that. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't. Can you, he can't see my eyes being glazed, can he? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> to make things even more complicated. But the reason for the big swing is primarily due to the legislative changes that were enacted Those that the legislators. imposed a limit on the cost of living adjustment. And that, so as of June 30, 2014, those limitations were in place. And that essentially resulted in a net pension asset for the system. As of that date, after June 30, 2014, there was the court ruling that overturned most of the limitation on the cost of living adjustment for beneficiaries who had already accrued benefits up to the point of the new legislation. So the PERS actuary did some estimates of the impact of the court ruling, and that would bring the plan back to a net pension liability position. But since the court ruling didn't take place until after the measurement date that we're reporting by, those impacts aren't seen in our financial statements yeah. for last fiscal year, but we'll, we'll be seeing them this next fiscal right. year. Understood. hope that I'm, answers no, your I'm question. Still stuck. What would you, what, explain to me what net position is. Is it an asset? Is it a liability? What, what's net position to begin with? It's, it's essentially assets minus liabilities. So it's an uh, actual amount in place somewhere, or is it just, yes, it has to be? Well, it's, it's a mathematical equation. <laughs> All right, if you say we're okay, I'll just go with that. It's, I mean, it's definitely <clears throat> not cash balances. It's an accrual basis concept, and we're more familiar with uh, more of a cash basis fund balance type of concept on a, on a budgetary scale. So this is the adjusted end of the year accrual basis position of the county the entire um, county right which is still positive fund. the 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 net position of the county is still positive right. um, and the impact for last fiscal year of the new pension accounting standards was to improve the net position but you can be assured that next year it will reduce our net position right as the legislation got overturned and everything swings the other direction. I'm sure that you both clearly understand the pension standard does not affect daily operations, nor does it affect budgetary accounting, et cetera. It only affects the entire county looked at as a whole on what we call a full accrual accounting basis. The numbers would have been the same whether we had the new pension standard or not. The only difference is the, the standard setters say, we want to see these in your financials, not in the footnotes. The numbers were there. That's, there's two primary goals for the new pension accounting standards. One is to make sure that governments are reporting their true liability related to providing pension benefits. And the other is that all governments are reporting on a comparable basis so that if somebody's trying to make comparisons between governments, their pension accounting information has been prepared using the same methodology. In Oregon, that wasn't as big a deal because the reporting's uniform out of PERS. Right. I don't want to take us too far off on a, a <laughs> rabbit trail here, but um, one of my concerns in a prior life down the street was um, understated or not stated liabilities of other retirement benefits. For example, the promise of health care being paid by TriMet forever, and they had a 
800 billion or 800 million now it's over a billion dollar liability does this new ruling force them to show that on their financial statements or is it just the um, pension the new standards only apply to pensions there will be additional standards being implemented in a couple of years that apply to other post-employment benefits we do already report uh, net OPEB liability, but other post-employment <clears throat> benefits, right? <laughs> um, we do already report that on our balance sheet, but the new standards will make the basis of accounting more similar to what we're now using for pensions. So uh, the methodology that we use to report the OPEB liability right now is a little bit different from the methodology used for pensions. But three years is implementation date? So I think that might actually um, be in the footnotes. So, so three years, uh, sometime in the future, all that's going to have to be. It'll be on the same basis. Yeah. And so your other post-employment benefits, which includes primarily health care uh, extension, uh, both under the state law as well as um, outliers like TriMet that offer full, those all will have to be recorded in the same method. Now, that all being said, as Cynthia said, the numbers are in the footnotes. You can get to the numbers, um, right. but th now they want them moved forward just like we have with the pension standards. Yeah. Is that fair? Okay. Yeah. Yes, so fiscal year 2018 is okay. when those new standards are required That's to right. be implemented. Great. You'll be happy to know TriMet has a plan to deal with that debt. They you know do. they're busy buying lottery tickets just this morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would solve it. <laughs> so, Chair Cameron, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the 2014-15 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the report Thank is you. approved. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Appreciate it. And that is the end of our business. I just got to find a calendar here. I'll read our calendar where you're going to be next week. Okay. How do I? There we go. Are we reading the one week calendar? Is that the one I'm asking for? Okay, so. All right, so today, uh, here we are at our board session. Later on today, the 13th, Wednesday, 3 to 4, Insight Board of Directors meeting. Um, and then tomorrow, Thursday, the 14th, 9.30 to 10.30, we have a work session. Oh, I didn't say the, the Insight Board of Directors meeting is at 626 High Street Northeast, Suite 305. Today, t tomorrow... Shoo. Thursday, tomorrow, 9.30 to 10.30 work session on remote access policy in the Silverton Conference Room on the fifth floor here in the Courthouse Square. On Monday, the 18th, holiday. Closed for Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. And uh, next Wednesday, we are back here at 9 o'clock for a board session. So if I could ask that insight meeting, are you attending that? I am not. You are not. That's why I am. That's fine. Is right. there anything to know there? We, we can... Um, yes, there was... There's a phone call. Um, no, I guess there, that was just another subject. There's a... Um, there was last meeting I was at, we asked for some budgets. We asked for some financials. We haven't seen them yet. So expecting they're, those they're, well, yeah, I'm All hoping right. they see them today. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a little bit of a, maybe a firestorm over there. Oh. So, especially. Well, if, I'm especially, suddenly intrigued. I'm yeah, you, <laughs> you, you'll be ears and then just follow Nyquist lead. You'll have it. All right. Okay. So, uh, anything else before we uh, adjourn today? Anything over legal counsel? Or? I was gonna. I thought about this, and for reasons that you'll see soon, see why I shouldn't even bring it up. But I stayed at the union last night. You know what? I couldn't even watch it. I'm sorry. And I won't go any more than that. But you can fill in the blanks. Good night. I'm tired.
That's all. Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> so, um, anything else this week that's happened? Um, it's been since last Wednesday. I'm trying to think. I'd have to go back through the calendar, but all right. It's Just... been it's been busy, but not. Oh, we I, we had uh, our public safety council meeting last night. Coordinating council meeting last night, and because um, uh, commissioner is is on vacation, they had the individual who was supposed to chair it had car trouble so <clears throat> we uh, had our famous district attorney chair the public safety council meeting last night and well, i know it'd be passionate then he brings that he did a great job it was really good so um and we had presentations about the um potential for um housing the, the housing project that's commissioner carlson's working on um citing the uh, sponsors down in Eugene, so that was good. And what I really loved about his chairmanship is we were out of there early because there was, you know, important speech last night that we all had to go Oh, and you did watch, watch. it. I recorded it because I was at another So you event. will watch it. I did start to watch it, uh -huh. and I turned it off and went to sleep. I figured my, my rest was more important than listening to the whole speech. So that's all I'll say. Hmm. I thought you were more enlightened to somebody I cares about our national situation. I do. I do right. care very much just like you do. Okay. Legal counsel, any input today? All right. We're going to adjourn. Thank you. Probably good.